Yeah, we can start. We can start. So, uh, uh, so good afternoon to all dignitaries, guests, and guests. As per Indian time, uh, with great joy and immense pleasure, I welcome you all. I feel privileged to extend my warm welcome to all the participants for this 11th international webinar today on external higher education quality assurance in NASA, that is NAQA Ukraine, uh, which will be delivered by NAQA Vice Head Natalia Stukolo. Um, I'm very much thankful to Madam because uh, whenever uh, when I gave an invitation, she uh, quickly responded to my mail uh, and uh, she was ready to speak on this topic. So in our Indian, uh, we are thankful to our by saying namaskar and thank you so much for joining us in today's webinar. So today's webinar will be broadcasted on our NAC social media handles. On Twitter, it will be NAC underscore India. On YouTube, that will be NAC dash India and also on the Facebook. So if by chance you have missed this uh, important speak, uh, sp uh, important lecture by Madam, uh, then you can uh, uh, log into our uh, NAC social media handles, then you can see. But uh, I request you to kindly be with us because you can have a, a question because we will be having a question answer session after the finishing the after the end of the session where you can ask the question related to the quality assurance and accreditation process uh, to madam so uh, now not taking uh, much of now i request at the time back madam advisor nat briefly give the introduction about the program and welcome the august gathering and dignitaries on this webinar please madam thank you pandey ji uh, namaskar Professor Dr. Natalia, a vice head of the National Agency for Higher Education Quality Assurance, Ukraine. Professor Amiya Kumar Rath, distinguished academic fraternity from different parts of the world, and my dear colleagues. On behalf of the director NAC, NAC family, and on my personal behalf, I welcome each one of you for this international webinar. As all of you are aware, the National Assessment and Accreditation Council, popularly known as NAC, is an autonomous body, Quality Assurance of India, under the University Grants Commission, UGC of India. It has the mandate to assess and accredit institutions of higher education. The NAC follows an internationally accepted methodology for assessment which is a combination of self-evaluation followed by external evaluation. NAC encourages participatory exercise, ensuring the wild involvement of the HEI community with utmost honesty. The NAC views the process of assessment and accreditation as an exercise in partnership with jointly by the NAC and the institution. Every stage of the process, it is marked by transparency. The institution is consulted at various stages of the process and also to handle and to guide the higher education institutions in quality journey, NAC has been organizing seminar in collaboration with state governments, universities, apart from other quality assurance activities. Even during this pandemic situation, NAC is conducting webinars for the benefit of higher education community. So far, NAC has organized more than 100 webinars on best practices, assessment and accreditation methodology, and other quality-related aspects. NAC has been collaborating with international quality assurance agencies from the beginning in quality assurance related activities and has brought out a few publications on quality assurance in collaboration with Paul, UNESCO and other quality assurance agencies. NAC is the founder member of INQAHE and APQN. During this pandemic time, NAC is organizing webinars with international quality assurance agencies to the benefit of the academia. 
This is the 11th webinar in International Quality Assurance webinar series. In this, Professor Natia Lia, Vice Head of the National Agency for Quality Education Quality Assurance, sorry, National Agency for Higher Education Quality Assurance, NAQA, Ukraine, will be sharing her experiences on external higher education quality assurance in pandemic times. I once again welcome Professor Natalia and we would like to have collaboration beyond this seminar on quality assurance activities. I also welcome all the distinguished academicians who are participating in this webinar and my dear colleagues, I welcome one and all. Uh, thank you uh, very much, Madam, for your brief introduction to the program and also describing the what are the roles and responsibility which NAC is handling uh, for the past 26 years. And a warm welcome address that has made the participant very comfortable. Thank you once again. Uh, now, I request Professor Amir Kumar Ras, sir, sir, to NAC to please deliver the opening remarks. Sir, please. Yes. Professor Dr. Natalia, hello, Vice Head of the National Agency for Higher Education Quality Assurance in NAQA, Ukraine, chief guest and main speaker for today's webinar on external higher educational quality assurance in pandemic times, NAQA, Dhaka, Ukraine experience. I, Professor Amio Kumar, advisor NAC, on behalf of Director NAC, Professor S.C. Sarma, on my personal behalf and on behalf of the entire NAC family, I welcome you all in 11th International Webinar organized by National Assessment and Accreditation Council at India. Ladies and gentlemen uh, who have joined us, joined us from different parts of the world, watching live through YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and WebEx platform. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening as per time zones. Thank you all for logging in and evincing interest on participate in the 11th NAC International Webinar Series of NAC India. Uh, let me start by saying that NAC is in its 26th year of service to quality assurance in the form of assessment and accreditation in India. NAC is a member of international network of quality assurance agencies in higher education in Kwahe. NAC is also a member of Asia Pacific Quality Network, APQN. So far, NAC has done around 13,000 accreditations throughout India. Needless to say that NAC has also provided leadership and its good practices to different countries. Now it is the time for international cooperations and mutual learning during the post-COVID-19 pandemic period. As mentioned earlier by my colleagues, NAC has organized more than 100 webinars from April 2020, reaching out to the unreached during the pandemic period with a minimum impact of about a million academics within India. NAC would like to learn from other quality assurance agencies and networks about their best practices and how they do accreditation, accreditation either program accreditation or institutional accreditation. NAC would also like to learn from learn how different QA agencies overcome certain common problems in their respective environment. Also, NAC would like to share its best practices especially the ICT integration of quantitative part of assessment and accreditation in quality assurance systems. I understand that mission of the NAQA NACA is to catalyze positive changes in higher education and to save its quality culture. I happy to say that strategic goals of NAQA include quality of educational service, recognition of the quality of scientific result and ensuring the systematic systemic impact. NAG has learned a lot from international community of quality assurance agencies. Best wishes for the webinar. Thank you. Namaste.
ஸ்பெஷலி <laughs> Professor Natalia Chikolo is the vice head of the National Agency for Higher Education Quality Assurance NACA. She has completed her PhD and DSc in International Economics at Kiev National Economic University and she has also taken internships and trainings at Harvard University, University of Amsterdam, Catholic University of Lviv, University of Liverpool and others. She is well known Ukrainian educator quality assurance expert and researcher dr natalia has an experience in online education working at lotet online education uk based university and at global university system interactive pro uh, before being elected as a member of naca she has spent 20 years teaching and managing at ukrainian british and german universities Professor Stukalo is the author of more than 100 academic papers on international economics, global finance and higher education issues. In addition to contributing to the development of Ukrainian higher education quality assurance system, she also enjoys discussing new places and getting to know new people. Uh, she currently resides in Kyiv and identifies her personal mission as serving as an academic leader by promoting culture of quality high standards forward thinking so that the student get relevant competencies to be successful in the changing globalized world madam there is a lot to tell about you but i think because of time constraint we could uh, do just uh, do this much justice only with your uh, profile uh, with this brief introduction may i now request our speaker eminent speaker for today's session to please uh, go ahead with her presentation on external higher education quality assurance in pandemic times naka ukraine experience please ma'am Thank you very much dear colleagues it is really my pleasure uh, to uh, be invited to this uh, webinar and i uh, highly appreciate the invitation of the national Edu uh, national assessment and accreditation council in india and uh, uh, i really enjoy the introductions and uh, uh, thank you very much for this invitation So to, uh, during today's webinar, I would like to share uh, some experience which our agency, National Agency for Higher Education Quality Assurance in Ukraine, uh, uh, have experience in pandemic time. Uh, so uh, there are some figures re regarding the higher education um, in Ukraine. So uh, by this moment, we have more than 1,200 higher education institutions in total. But if we are talking about the universities, uh, uh, so we have uh, 381 state-funded universities with subdivisions. and we have 23 municipal universities and we also have private universities uh, we have 1.4 million students including phd students 25000 of phd students and uh, 56% of our students they um, uh they, they are studying on the contract base and 44% uh, of our students they get uh, um, state budget scholarship so st state covers their uh, cost of studies uh, we also have foreign students uh, about 76000 and also 77000 ukrainian st students studying abroad and our graduates are split uh, in some uh, disciplines so uh, the the biggest part is 44% they they are from social economic and humanities and 16% of engineers 8% of medical workers and so on Uh, so as for high educational system in Ukraine we have the Minister of Education and Science of Ukraine and the National Agency for Quality Assurance and our responsibilities are split as uh, 
presented on the slide. So the ministry is responsible for developing and implementing education and policy, but NACA, according to Ukrainian legislation, is responsible for ensuring the development, promotion, and improving the quality of higher education, establishing, evaluating higher education, and also providing recommendations for the development of quality assurance system in higher education. Uh, National Agency for uh, Quality uh, for Higher Education Quality Assurance Mandate, according to the legislation, is as follows. So we are responsible for accreditation of study programs of all cycles. So we uh, provide um, accreditation to bachelor, master, and PhD programs. Uh, we are also responsible for accreditation of thesis defense committees, uh, accreditation of independent agencies. Actually, we, we still don't have the system of independent agencies in Ukraine, but we uh, put all our efforts to develop this system. Uh, we are also responsible for institutional accreditation and also development of university rankings uh, and compliance with academic integrity. Uh, there are some other activities which are important, uh, like uh, we publish annual report, and actually these reports are available at our website, both in Ukrainian and English. So if you are interested in some figures and some of our uh, results, so you are very welcome to visit our website and see our annual reports. Uh, we also mm, agree high educational standards and we also develop, contribute to the development of educational policy regulations. Uh, as for uh, the, the brief uh, note on uh, the uh, history on evaluation uh, uh, on history uh, of our agency, so uh, the NACA was established in uh, 2014 by the law on higher education, on new law on higher education. Uh, but uh, the first composition of, of the NACA elected in 2015 uh, unfortunately didn't have official start and uh, some legislative changes were required and uh, the procedure uh, was approved and only in December 2018 the new personal NACA composition was elected. And uh, in February 2019, NACA officially started uh, its work. So we have quite new organization. We are working just uh, two years, uh, but but uh, um, I so I'm really uh, proud. It, it, it is my pleasure to present today to you um, some results. And because of the pandemic, was the most part of our work we do in uh, in online now. So I will share with you some uh, some experience. Um, uh, so, our mission uh, is to become catalyst for changes in higher education in Ukraine to create quality culture and we base our activities and our strategy on such values as partnership, trust, independence, professionalism, academic integrity, transparency, innovations, and we are very open to any kind of collaboration and we are ready to share experience, exchange experience, and if you use the QR code presented uh, uh, at this slide, uh, you can see our strategy. It's also translated into English, so uh, our strategy is shared at our website. Uh, this is the structure of, uh, on this slide, you can see the structure of National Agency for Higher Education Quality Assurance. We have 23 elected members, uh, and uh, the members are elected for three years. And the next year, we will have new composition of the National Agency for Quality Assurance. We have also secretariat. So, uh, a secretariat is responsible for technical, organizational, and all other issues of the National Agency. We have more than 50, uh, sorry, 60 people working in the secretariat. Uh, we have also formed 29 uh, subject area councils. So one uh, subject area councils, which is uh, which is responsible for pedagogy. Uh, pe pedagogy uh, is split into two. So actually, we have uh, 30 subject area councils, and in these subject area councils, we have 400 members. Uh, who are the most, uh, uh, you know, well known and the most experienced uh, educators in these particular subject areas. Uh, we have also uh, recruited and trained more than uh, 4,000 accreditation experts. 
And we have now 45 trainers, uh, NACA trainers, who help us to train accreditation experts. And these trainers were uh, trained by um, uh, our colleagues from uh, the UK. So uh, British Council together with QAA, Quality Assurance Agency uh, of, of the uh, UK, uh, they helped us to train the trainers. So we, we are in very good collaboration with the QAA in, and the QAA make significant contribution in, order, uh, in, in development of quality assurance in Ukraine. Uh, so, during these two years, we became uh, the members of uh, uh, four organizations. For INQUAHA, actually, I'm very uh, happy to get to know the National uh, uh, assess, uh, Assessment and Accreditation Council in India is also a uh, full member of INQUAHA. So, Ukrainian agency is also a member of, full member of INQUAHA. We are also member of SENCA, which is Central and Eastern European Network work for quality assurance agencies in higher education. Uh, we also got affiliate status of ANCA, European Association for Quality Assurance, and we aim to become full members of ANCA, and actually we are very active in uh, participating all the events uh, of ANCA and uh, during the last um, uh, European Quality Assurance Forum we presented Ukraine's case. Uh, the, the, during this forum, so we are very active here. And we are also, because NACA is responsible for uh, uh, compliance uh, to academic integrity issues, so we uh, are also members of the International Center for Academic Integrity, which is based in, in the United States of America. Uh, so, as for our accreditation activities, uh, it's uh, we have um, uh, developed and um, it was approved by the uh, by the Ministry of Education and Cabinet of Ministers the uh, regulation on study program accreditation, and we have developed uh, ten criteria uh, which I aligned to ESG 2015. I, I'm I'm sure colleagues, you know what. what that the European standards and guidelines are very important for us because Ukraine is a member of um, um, higher education area, European higher education area, and uh, that's why we align all our policies to uh, European standards and guidelines for quality assurance in higher education. According to our uh, study program uh, accreditation regulation, we have four grades and all study programs are evaluated uh, and uh, we, we grant them grades A, B, E or E, which means that A is uh, exceptional, very good and uh, very innovative study program, B means normal accreditation, e, e means conditional one year accreditation and uh, F means uh, fail, so means that uh, this is uh, program um, is not accredited by the National Agency for Higher Education Quality Assurance. Uh, as for accreditation process and brief, so it starts with the uh, with the initiative of the inst uh, higher educational institution. They submit application and submit self assessment. Uh, so they assess themselves. Uh, where are these ten criteria which I me were mentioned? Then we send expert panel and we, we, we form and then send to the university the expert panel. It, it uh, expert panel site visit and uh, expert panel prepares the report. Then uh, this report is submitted to subject area council and subject area council reviews it and verifies it and confirms uh, it. And then uh, subject area council sends it to, to NACA, so to, to our board, and we review uh, as National Agency for Higher Education Quality Assurance, we review all the reports and make final decision. Uh, so our expert panel is normally uh, includes three experts, and one of them is student expert. And uh, uh, our subject area councils also include uh, representatives uh, of employers and also student representatives. 
Uh, actually, in NACA composition, so as I mentioned, there are 23 members of NACA, uh, elected members of NACA, and NACA includes uh, two students' uh, representatives and three representatives from employers. So five out of 23 people are stakeholders' representatives. And uh, actually, we, uh, as uh, as I mentioned, we started in February 2019, and uh, before the October, we developed all the documents and the regulations. And in October 2019, we started accreditations of study programs. So, starting from October 2019 and uh, before February 2020, when the pandemic started, we have completed uh, 400 face-to-face -face accreditation. So, before the pandemic, we managed to complete just 400. Uh, uh, accreditations. What happened when the uh, pandemic started in uh, early March uh, in uh, 2020? Uh, so, uh, what what was our response? So, we couldn't stop the accreditations because our higher educational institutions cannot issue diplomas to students without accreditation certificate so we couldn't stop uh, the process because we we uh, we had to support uh, our universities and uh, that's why uh, first of all of course as everybody in the world uh, in in ukraine we had uh, quarantine uh, and all uh, all the universities stopped their face-to-face -face, uh, classes and everybody started to, to work in online format uh, so on march 12 uh, and the, we have announced that uh, all uh, face-to-face -face site visits are cancelled due, uh, due to COVID-19 quarantine. And we started to think what we can do and invent. And in March uh, 18, so we uh, worked really hard for, for a week and we developed provisional accreditation procedure and adopted it on March 18, 2020. So on March 26, we started uh, online site visits, uh, which were very uh, important for uh, uh, us because we just tried first site visits in online format. And uh, this uh, accreditation procedure is based on the following principles. So, first of all, it is temporary measures. So, uh, in uh, March to, uh, to 2020, we uh, believed that it will uh, finish very soon and uh, decided to do such uh, online visits only uh, as temporary measure. We didn't expect that the, uh, the, uh, the pandemic will last so long time. Uh, then next principle is the full expertise, including all meetings with stakeholders and evaluation of all accreditation criteria. Uh, so it is it, it was very important and we uh, watched as the process and we uh, did our best to uh, keep uh, all the standards of uh, accreditation visits of, of panel visits. So all meetings with stakeholders, with uh, with students, with uh, employers, with uh, alumni uh, were conducted, and the, the, we just used Zoom instead of face-to-face uh, -face visits, and uh, uh, we evaluated all accreditation criteria. So there were, were no exceptions, so uh, all the procedures were uh, in line with our standards and with uh, ESG requirements. Uh, no face-to-face -face contacts uh, during the online visits, of course, uh, and all interviews uh, have been done uh, using video conferencing and other IT tools. Uh, so, uh, uh, within one year, from March 2020 to March 2021, we have conducted uh, more than 1,100 1, online accreditations. And uh, uh, yesterday, we had NACA meeting and we have uh, approved uh, uh, three more hundred um, study programs accreditations. So, uh, by this moment in total, uh, considering both um, 
uh, online and face-to-face -face visits. We have about 2,000 accreditations completed within uh, these two years of our activities. Uh, we we uh, widely publish our cases and our uh, you know experience. So um, our case, for instance, case of our online accreditation is published at, uh, in ANCA collection of cases, and also uh, in ANCA anniversary publication. Uh, as I mentioned, I have all, also made a presentation at the European Quality Assurance for, uh, Forum. So, if you use these uh, links or QR codes, uh, you will uh, you you can easily get to these publications and uh, read a little bit more about uh, our case and our experience uh, regarding the online accreditations. Uh, there are some uh, statistics, so we have very transparent and open uh, policy and strategy. So all our um, cases and all our documents are published uh, at the public NACA Gov UA. Uh, Unfortunately, by this moment, the system uh, is only in Ukrainian, but the reports and some um, and some, uh, uh, you know, uh, general information we also publish in English and our annual report is available in English at our English website. Um, so, um, if uh, you are interested, you can also review it. Uh, so, uh, how the marks are split? As you remember, a, uh, I mentioned that A is very exceptional and very innovative study programs. We have just 3% of such innovative programs. 68.9% uh, 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 of study programs get normal accreditation. Mm, and 25% uh, is one year conditional accreditation. It means that the program uh, should either improve or uh, to, to close the pro or high educational institution should close this program in one year. If they improve, they can submit another uh, application and uh, they will be reviewed and then uh, the NACA will decide if uh, it's um, if it's okay and if this program can be accredited. And we have 2.3% of uh, denials of accreditation. Uh, we also, as uh, so, I, I also uh, is very pleased to get to know that uh, NARC uh, in India uh, has conducted a lot of webinars, more than 100 webinars. So we are also very active uh, regarding this point. So we uh, share our experience, we provide consultations, we respond questions of our stakeholders, we uh, conduct webinars for our. Uh, high educational institutions uh, for uh, universities for representatives of Academy of Science because they uh, also um, uh, are going to accredit their uh, their um, PhD programs. So we are very open to the public and on the weekly basis we have uh, NACA webinars. We also have uh, online NACA School of Quality where we share the best practices and invite speakers to, to share the best practices. And uh, what is also important, we noted that we need to uh, support our trainers, our experts, uh, and uh, that's why we decided to develop uh, online trainings for NACA trainers. So, uh, in July, August 2020, we had uh, three uh, sessions for our trainers uh, and International Fund for Education Policy and Research has helped us to organize this training for our trainers to to uh, uh, support them with uh, advanced digital competencies to uh, to explain them what what is expected from the side and also to equip them with the tools to train the, the experts online in september 2020 we had uh, five day trainings uh, for uh, these uh, trainers uh, uh, supported and conducted by the QAA from the UK and British Council. 
And uh, uh, so we aim to prepare and support NACA trainers to conduct online trainings and to discuss the new online approach and ethics of online communication and to update trainers' skills. Actually, ethics of online communication is also very important and because now a lot of uh, activities are done online, so oh, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is very important topic. Um, then uh, we have trainings for accreditation experts. So since July 2020, we have conducted 63 trainings with uh, uh, 1,756 participants uh, in order to train new experts for online uh, uh, for online uh, panels. And uh, by this moment, we have three options. So uh, we, we conduct mostly online uh, panels, site visits to the universities, but we also have uh, a blended model when uh, uh, some trainers are, uh, uh, join panel online and uh, one or two uh, experts uh, visit the university on face-to-face -face basis. It depends on the uh, pandemic situation and on on the zone on quarantine zone of each particular city in in Ukraine. Uh, we also have uh, uh, developed uh, you know new approaches. Uh, so we use Zoom for the tra uh, trainings. Uh, we base our trainings on the case studies on our experience, which we already have. Uh, we uh, conduct war in breakout rooms so the uh, experts could uh, communicate in smaller groups. Uh, we also model uh, work in uh, the online accreditation system and uh, practice. Uh, and experts also have opportunity during these trainings to practice their report writing. So. Uh, what is important for this online training is that we are combining standard content of the trainer, uh, trainings, but also add some additional digital skills and video conferencing tools uh, for distance site visits. Uh, and uh, we collect feedback uh, from experts on training quality and uh, we have uh, 9.6 out of 10 uh, uh, level satisfaction so uh, uh, everybody is very happy with the new knowledge gained we also um, have very positive uh, feedback on the methods used and the organization of training uh, then uh, we also, again, we uh, faced uh, and uh, did some monitoring and questionaries uh, during this the last year, and we have um, realized that uh, the heads of expert panels who conduct uh, online site visits, they need some additional support and they need to be equipped with some new skills. And we developed uh, trainings for heads of expert panels. And it's like advanced level of trainers for, uh, for of trainings for experts. And uh, we have already conducted some of such trainings. We started them, just, it's very new product, very new service, let's say. Uh, it started in March 2021, and um, we uh, uh, equip our heads of expert panels with digital organizational communicational skills to work in distant format and and uh, format and to use NACA online accreditation system effectively. Actually, just a few words about our online accreditation system. So we do everything online, uh, starting from the very beginning. I mean, all the documents submitted by the university via the online system, and uh, we uh also uh, at the, and all stages uh all um, stages of the accreditation procedures are conducted online so we don't have any papers in naka i mean nobody prints anymore any reports and doesn't submit us in the the hard copy so we have everything online and this system as i mentioned is publicly available and uh everybody can check the reports of expert groups and uh, uh, of naka and of sectoral councils 
uh, and uh, uh, coming to, to the end uh, of my presentation, I would like to explain some issues re regarding cross-border quality assurance because for Ukraine it's very uh, very important and according to Ukrainian uh, legislation we have uh, opportunity uh, and, and have uh, uh, our Ukrainian higher educational institutions uh, may choose a suitable acquire uh, its European quality assurance register uh, agencies so those agencies we, which are registered in acquire uh, in order, um, uh, in order to, to you know, to have uh, uh, options, so uh, our universities can uh, get accreditation not only from the NACA, but also they can use any acquire registered um, agencies. Uh, and we have special issue of order of the Cabinet of Ministers of Ukraine, and you can see the link here. And this uh, order includes the uh, list of the agencies uh, whose accreditations are accepted and recognized in Ukraine. Uh, for us, it's very important because our universities, they can, uh, you know, they can uh, check their um, quality of their programs, uh, uh, considering the uh, foreign requirements. Mm, the, uh, all acquire registered agencies, they align uh, their uh, requirements to ESG 2015, so our universities, uh, can can do that. I mean, uh, so they are, are welcome to to apply to accreditations of the foreign agencies. Uh, it is also important to note that uh, in uh, Ukraine, on the final decision on accreditation of study programs by relevant foreign agency is equivalent to the accreditation of NACA. It's also according to the. Um, it also according to our legislation and details are available uh, on the link provided here. So if uh, if the university applies for foreign accreditation uh, and wants to you know test this cross border quality assurance, they need to check first of all if the uh, agency listed in uh, the order of the cabinet of ministers and then make sure that on the final decision on accreditation that, that this agency can issue the final decision because we know that some european agencies they can make evaluations but they don't make final decision for foreign uh, uh, universities and uh, it can be an issue so it's very important that according to the foreign legislation agency can issue the final decision and uh, what is also very important that by this moment we have uh, 35 ukrainian study programs uh, which are accredited by foreign universities we have uh, accreditation by um, french uh, agency caris we also have some programs accredited uh, by uh, germany uh, agency zeva and also IEC Latvia. Uh, so uh, we have all this information in English and uh, if anybody is interested, you can use this link to our website where we have uh, published these practices uh, when our universities applied to the foreign um, agencies and got these accreditations. Uh, so, uh, these programs are from different cycles, I mean, from bachelor, master and PhD and also very good um, uh, practice because the universities can check and compare and uh, also uh, align their programs to the uh, foreign criteria. Uh, actually, we are uh, also very active in bilateral uh, collaboration and with all these agencies we uh, stay in touch and we have signed bilateral agreements with, this, with these mentioned agencies and also with uh, some uh, other European agencies because we are very um you know open for uh, for bilateral collaboration and for 
uh, exchanging experience. And when the agencies conduct accreditations in our uh, country in Ukraine, so they normally contact us and we present them the system and explain them our requirements for foreign agencies try to consider our uh, requirements and, and uh, try to be in line with our um, system and our legislation. Uh, so, uh, these are the major issues. Of course, I can talk about uh, our experience uh, a lot and uh, uh, you, can, you can find also a lot of information at our website, which is available via this QR code, so it's NACA.gov.ua. Uh, and uh, you also can see the QR code with my um, business card, with my personal information, with my email and with uh, the link to the website. Uh, so uh, I, I would like uh, to thank you for attention and I will be really happy to share uh my experience and NACA experience and to answer any questions which may appear uh, thank you so much madam for enlightening us uh, on the various and working pattern followed by NACA uh now moving ahead on in the uh, question and answer session first the participants kindly raise your hands to ask the question, and I also request uh, Mr. Samuel to kindly help me in this regard. Yeah, as of Mr. now, Samuel. I'm able to see only one participant has raised their hands. I will request the participants, if at all, if you have any queries, you may kindly raise your hands, and also you can drop your questions in the chat box or in Q&A. So, Dr. Mohindakor, you may ask your question. Yes, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, Dr. Natalia Stukalo, very wonderful presentation. Uh, the very first point you discussed uh, that was regarding the committee, you know, 23 elected members. You know, uh, are those politicians or some academicians and how do they are elected for the very relevant body which is uh, accrediting? And another observation of uh, mine is that uh, what is the duty of this subject area council? And I also I appreciate that you include a student in your expert committee. That is a very, very positive point. And another observation is that during the offline process, 400 accreditations were done in a year. And while it was online, of course, due to the pandemic, and those uh, the uh, number is 1100 at that time. So, what is the future? Whether in future you are going to be uh, on online only or some hybrid method because your output is more. And another last observation is regarding ethics of online process. Your how you train in ethics in the online pro process. I appreciate your presentation and the process you have developed for your country. Thank you. Okay, Th thank you very much for such interesting questions. And uh, yeah, they are very interesting because it, uh, for, for instance, you have started about 23 uh, members of the board and how they elected. It's a really a, a important question for us, as I mentioned. So 23 uh, composition of the board is the following. So 23 uh, uh, people, I elected two of them should be students. So uh, the, the students should uh, uh, student councils, European uh, student uh, council. Uh, you know they they delegate students and they participate in the in the uh, competition. And two of them should be. Uh, elected. Then we also have three representatives of the employers. Uh, so we have employers federation and they also nominate representatives. But uh, 18 people, they should be academics. So they should be representatives of the universities and of the Academy of Science. But we have one representative from each subject area, uh, one from mathematics, one from physics, one from economy, and so on and so forth. So uh, no more than one from uh, from each subject area, and also uh, uh, 
two representatives from one university cannot be elected. I mean, if uh, one representative is from mathematics from this university, they cannot delegate any other from any other subject area. So that's why the 18 people out of 23 are uh, representatives of academics and universities and uh, uh, five representatives of stakeholders, students and employers. Uh, as for your question about subject area councils, so they are responsible for verifying uh, of the um, reports of experts. So they check the uh, uh, reports which are submitted by the uh, experts and they verify them uh, just to ensure the consistent, uh, consistency across the, the whole discipline, the whole uh, subject area. And another important um, important uh, function of the subject area council, they also uh, agree and develop recommendations for standard for standards of higher education in their subject area. So uh, the, the standards they are developed by the ministry because the ministry has the methodical councils which develop the stand, uh, higher educational standards. But uh, this standard should be agreed with our subject area council. So this is also a very important part of their work. Uh, as for future of our uh, site visits, uh, it's a very good question because, as I mentioned, we, uh, we firstly we believe it is just temporary procedure, and we will not be back to it after the pandemic stops. But now we, we have very positive feedback on online site visits from our stakeholders, from universities, from experts. So we decided to have a um, model which will allow university and agency agree on the form of the site visit. So we have three options now. Uh, one is online site visit, one is normal face-to-face -face visit and also blended uh, form. So we um, suggest and we actually we discussed it uh, this point also with our uh, uh, parliament representatives in order to approve this procedure to have three options uh, even after the pandemic times because online procedures uh, have appeared to be very effective. So it's. Uh, a very uh, good experience in this. So we we will have. Uh, I hope we will have these three options, and university and NACA will agree on uh, on the form: online, blended, or um, or uh, face to face. And the last question was about the ethics of online communication. So we started to, to include this topic into our trainings because we have noted. Uh, some issues, you, uh, you know, so for instance, uh, it even starts from the name and from the avatar and the picture of, of the expert for uh, because, you know, in online environment, a lot of people, they can name uh, themselves with nicks or some avatars, but it doesn't work for the official procedures. So when our experts visit the universities, they are expected to, you know, to introduce themselves and all their names uh, in, in Zoom or in uh, any other tool, they should be written uh, clearly and they should have name and surname and relevant official avatar. Uh, and also they should uh, have the background with the NACA uh, logo. Uh, another point is how to communicate uh, during the online that they should uh, switch on the video, they should be, uh, you know, in time, they should keep uh, the time uh, uh, very accurately and many, many other issues, even how they communicate because they write a lot of emails and write a lot of via messages. So how to write correctly emails, how to respect uh, the high educational institutions and experts and so on and so forth. So we include these points because uh, uh, people uh, communicate a lot in online format. So again, thank you very much for these questions because they are very important and interesting. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, now, uh, uh, there is uh, one more. 
हेलो यस यस सर इट वाज अ वेरी नाइस प्रेजेंटेशन मैडम आई वुड लाइक टू आस बिकॉज जस्ट नो यू आंसर द बिट ऑन दैट बट आई वुड लाइक टू नो द एक्चुअल प्रोसेस ऑफ ऑनलाइन एक्रेडिटेशन because due to uh, due, even uh, in the pandemic times you have done the more than 1000 uh, on site uh, uh, i mean online accreditations and uh, you have said that uh, uh, with the video conferencing with the stakeholders and by using some it another uh, other it tools and all so i am interested in knowing that what is the exact or scheduled process of how many days or in which way this is carried out and conducted so and uh, because you say that it, is, it has been uh, proved a very effective method also and you are going for a three another methods now henceforth but uh, we are really i am really interested in knowing in which way this online accreditation process has been conducted by you mm -hmm. uh, okay yeah so uh, we have a three day uh, site visits and uh, all the Uh, all the uh, sessions and interviews are the same as in normal face-to-face -face visit. For instance, uh, the experts start, start the first day with uh, communication with the representatives of the study programs, then with, uh, they have interviews with representatives of the university administration uh, they discuss the uh, uh, issues related to the uh, you know program management and so on and so forth then they uh, uh, have uh, interviews with students with uh, alumni then with stakeholders so uh, also they have interviews with um, Uh, with anybody who would like to discuss this program, it, we call it open session when the link is shared and everybody can come and uh, discuss issues related to the program. Besides, uh, experts have uh, like a virtual excursion, uh, virtual visit uh, uh, to the universities and university demonstrates video of their facilities, laboratories, of their rooms, of their buildings. things and everything just to because one of the criteria is uh, uh, facilities and also buildings so uh, they also do it with video conferencing tools with uh, via zoom so normally we conduct all the uh, interviews and all the visits with uh, means of zoom and uh, in zoom they have all the meetings and then also this virtual excursion they also have uh, with the zoom tool or the university submits like video with uh, all the facilities uh, to, to to demonstrate the experts so they can uh, evaluate it thank you ma'am डॉक्टर कमल डॉक्टर कमल डॉक्टर के जी छाया इट वॉज अ वेरी नाइस प्रेजेंटेशन मैडम एक्चुअली आई वॉन्टेड टू नो रिगार्डिंग दू हैव मैं दैट यू ऑल्सो हैव दोविजन ऑफ टेम्पररी एक्रेडिटेशन एज वेल एज uh the some institutes uh, can also get uh, accreditation from the foreign agency so what are the objectives of uh, these two uh, different uh, accreditations thank you very much uh, so uh, uh, you know we, we do our best to uh, as i mentioned we are going to become full members of anca european uh, quality assurance network so we are affiliate now and according to the uh, european standards and guidelines uh, the cross border quality assurance is uh, you know very uh, highly appreciated so the uh, sometimes you know uh, for instance we are universal agency we we give accreditations in all different areas but some universities for instance medical universities they want to get accreditations from the very specific agency who accredits uh, just uh, you know medical programs uh, there uh, some universities for instance in business and management programs they wish to 
get these accreditations from uh, from those uh, agencies who uh, which are organized by European employers. So we have, for for instance, FIBA or some other agencies. They have um, the uh, you know very high ranking regarding the uh, um, collaboration with employers, and that's why universities want to check them. So I know some universities. Uh, for, for instance, I also work for. Uh, the UK based uh, universities and I know that these universities uh, wish to and programs in these universities wish to have some accreditations just to confirm the high standard in different systems. So they uh, so the alumni have diploma, which is recognized everywhere and wildly. So it, I, I think it's, it's quite good practice to, uh, you know, to challenge. Uh, for, uh, for, quite good practice for universities to challenge themselves and to, you know, to check if uh, and benchmark their uh, activities and their programs to high standards in different countries. So we uh, we, we try not to monopolize uh, the market, uh, educational market, and we uh, encourage collaboration of universities with the foreign agencies also and to, to apply for the accreditation uh, for the accreditation of some other agencies. Yeah, there are some couple of questions in the chat. I may read out for your benefit. So what they're asking is, I interpret this way. NACA, is it confined to only Ukraine? Uh, yeah, NACA is National Agency for Higher Education Quality Assurance in Ukraine. So we, we by this moment, because we are young agency uh, and we, we conduct accreditations only in Ukraine by this moment. Okay, one other question is there. Have your agency given an extension period for reaccreditation during this pandemic period? Uh, sorry, could you please repeat one more time? Yeah, so, any kind of extension of validity of their accreditation has oh. been given. Okay, so we, according to the Ukrainian legislation, we cannot extend any accreditation. So, universities should apply when the uh, once their previous accreditation is ended so uh, unfortunately according to the legislation there is no option of extending accreditation so reaccreditation should be done one other question is there what is the role of students in NACA? Uh, we we uh, we do believe and we do uh, promote student oriented approach because students are the key uh, stakeholders and our students are very active and we have student representatives in NACA board. We also have student representatives in uh, subject area councils and also student representative in each expert group. So students uh, also trained when they uh, when they start. Uh, working with us, they are trained and they are aware of all accreditation criteria and they discuss with the university when they visit the university, for instance, uh, they, all the issues related to how the university treats students, how the university teaches uh, and uh, uh, in order to ensure that the university meets uh, student uh, students needs so it is very important role i mean the students are key stakeholders so uh, they are in the center of the accreditation system samuel sir yeah yeah i have a question if i am allowed to yes i'm going man yes yes yes, yes, yes. thank you uh, thank you very much ma'am for excellent presentation and it was re really very lucid and very clear how uh, the agency works and how you all are working for the very important cause or objective i have only one uh, question uh, rather query in my mind you have uh, very uh, rightly explained uh, the various role of the on site visit etc what would be the precise role of this this subject area council? This is uh, one thing. And second thing, do you have any some certain uh, set parameters on those basis you are doing all this uh, verification? So uh, on this thing, if you would like to. Uh, 
Yeah, so subject area councils do verification regarding these 10 criteria, which I mentioned. Uh, so the criteria are clearly explained in our regulation, which is translated into English and it is uh, available at our website in accreditation uh, on accreditation page. And we have 10 criteria which, you know, align to this ESG so 2015. So we check how the program uh you know organized how the program meets the standards european standards how the stu uh, the program considers uh, stakeholders opinion if the um, if the program design uh, meets the requirements and standard uh and uh, how the, uh, the one of the criteria is also teaching methods how the uh, how the program is delivered and if students are satisfied with the uh, delivering of uh, uh, the program and in with methods and with uh, tools which, which we which uh, with which this program is delivered uh, we also check uh, the one of the criteria is uh, the quality of uh, uh, you know of um, uh, people resources of the program it means uh, if the professors and teachers are qualified to teach these particular disciplines and this this particular courses, uh, another criteria is um, uh, facilities and uh, equipment and also the university facilities and campus and everything. So if the students can uh, study in the comfort and relevant uh, conditions, if they have access to libraries, internet and everything. And also, we um, because it is very important in the European standards, so transparency of the program. So the university should de demonstrate that the program is transparent, and uh, university provides all important information at their websites. And uh, uh, and uh, if the program is um, you know uh, available to to wider public to to be discussed and to be. Uh, to get feedback on. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Ma yeah. I think I think uh, it was the last question, madam. Uh, now I end of this webinar. I request Dr. Ram Singh in the assistant advisor pack to propose a vote of thanks. I'd like also like to request ma'am to we will be again trying to form a try to organize one more uh, program because our participants, uh, participants were overwhelmed with your uh, speak on your lecture related to this topic. So we in the future also we will be organizing one more related to this and also in the form of physical interaction. Now I request Dr. Sham Singh Inda sir to kindly give up a uh, proposal vote of thanks. Thank you Dr. Nilesh Pandeji. Uh, good afternoon, good uh, evening to all depending on the variety of times. Uh, as all good things come to an end in life, so is this webinar. On behalf of National Assessment and Accreditation Council, I take this opportunity to propose word of thanks to those who have directly and indirectly contributed to this webinar. First of all, I would like to propose heartily word of thanks to our guest speaker, Professor Natalia Stukalo, Vice Head of the National Agency for Higher Education Quality Assurance, Naka, Ukraine, for gracing today's webinar and delivering her talk. Thank you, Madam, for a very interesting and thought provoking talk. We are really enlightened with your knowledge and presence. I'm sure that all participants have taken note of your suggestions and will be discussing within their organization action to be taken at their level. I would like to thank to the torch bearer of this webinar, our respected honorable director, Professor Eshu Sharmaji, for leading and inspiring us in working towards the goal of conducting this webinar. We are immensely grateful and thankful to you, sir, for your constant support and guidance at all times. I am equally thankful to Professor Ramaya Kumar Rath, sir, Advisor Naik, Professor B.S. Ponmudar Rath, sir, Advisor Naik, Professor Sujata Shambhak, Advisor Naik, who have uh, made their constant efforts in materializing and uh, intending the webinar to go on as it has gone on today. My heart goes to thank to all the participants from around the globe for being a part of this webinar and encouraging the morale of the speaker and organizer by the constant support and presence and making this seminar a successful 
special thanks to all the NAC officers, advisors, deputy advisors, assistant advisors, officers, and support staff who helped for organizing this webinar. Last but not the least, we are thankful to each and everybody who were directly and indirectly involved in making this event a great success. And a special thanks to the ICT team, uh, Samuel Sir, uh, Habib, for giving this platform for organizing this webinar. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you very much. And thank you for organization and also for this opportunity and uh, very interesting questions. And uh, I really appreciate this new stage of collaboration with National uh, Assessment and Accreditation Council. And I would like to wish everybody good health and to, uh, you know, to overcome all these pandemic issues as soon as possible in order we could uh, meet face to face and to, to have uh, webinars and seminars uh, face to face, not only online. Thank you very much, and I'm very open for any kind of collaboration and join uh, any new uh, webinars and to to talk on specific topics. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie. Thank Thanks. you, Natalie. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Sujata. Thank you, Anita Sahu. Nilesh. Dr. Inda. Thank you. Sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. Thank you. Bye. 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 See you.